Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I took the bubble background stencil and made a bokeh effect on my background. I'm going to start by ink blending a panel. So this is the Lawn Fawn white cardstock and I have it cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just working on a Ranger silicone craft sheet here to protect my work surface. And I have four colors of Distress Oxides that I will be using today. I'm starting at the bottom of my card and this is using the Scattered Straw. And I'm using a foam blending tool because I like the coverage that it provides. If I'm going to ink blend an entire background, uh, I like to use the foam tools just because of the coverage that it gives. So after I went about a quarter of the way up, I'm going to come in with Victoria Velvet and notice that I'm starting from the side of the card. I'm not worried too much about how they're blending right now. I'll work on that as I go. This next color is Seedless Preserves and then my top color is going to be the Chipped Sapphire. So once I have a good layer on, the real big trick to ink blending is layering your color. You really need to work it to get the smooth transitions. That's the biggest tip that I can give you with ink blending. And I left most of my ink blending in the video here. I just really sped it up. But you'll notice that I'm going back and forth between my colors quite often, especially on those lines, just to really kind of blend those out. Some of it won't be as noticeable because we will be applying that stencil to this. But I just wanted to you know, kind of emphasize that it just really takes layering up those colors to get that blend. Now I wanted this to be a little darker. So I did add in more seedless preserves and more chipped sapphire. So after I was really happy with my background, I am bringing in the bubble background stencil from Lawn Fawn. Now this is two pieces and I just lined it up on the front of my card and I'm holding it in place from the back with some post-it tape. Then I'm going to bring in the Lawn Fawn Yeti ink, which is a pigment ink. And I have a foam tool here that I'm going to use, just going in circular motions over that entire background. Now you want to make sure you're going both ways. You want to go to the right and to the left when you're blending so that you're getting even coverage over all of those open areas. So after I have this first layer done, I'm going to peel up the stencil and pigment ink does stay wet a little longer than regular ink. So I'm just going to take my heat tool and just quickly go over that to kind of dry that. I don't want to smear it with the next stencil piece that I'm laying over the top. Now you can position this any way you want. I just kind of looked through to see where the bubbles were and some of them I'm overlapping and I'm repeating the same process, just going over all of those open areas, uh, kind of blending to the left and to the right to make sure that the entire open area is covered. Now I'm going to just take a rag and kind of buff off any excess of that Yeti pigment ink. You could totally leave your card just as this and remove the stencil and be done, but I could not resist adding some Moonstone Glimmer paste to this. I really did try to not do it, but I just, I couldn't help myself. So this is the Moonstone Glimmer paste and I took a spatula. I'm just scooping some out and spreading that all over the background. And then I'm going to just wipe off my tools and remove that stencil to see this beautiful bokeh background. This looks so good on dark colors. And then I will make sure to wash off my tools and my stencil right away so that doesn't get stuck to my stencil. I'm going to add a couple butterflies to the front of my card and this is using the layered butterflies die set. So I have a couple here die cut from white cardstock and the base from white cardstock and I want to add holographic in between. Now you can see I did die cut a base up on top with the holographic but it was almost too flat for me. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of a die cut inlay and I'm going to show you two different ways that I did it. So I started with just grabbing each piece and adding it right into those areas using the Lawn Fawn liquid glue and my tweezers. So after I have all of the pieces added into this butterfly where I'm doing that die cut inlay, I'm going to show you one where I just added that first layer on top of holographic cardstock. And I don't know if you can really see the difference between the two. I can tell in person. 
I prefer this one. This is the die cut inlay. It just seemed a little bit more dimensional and sectioned off. Uh, not sure you can really tell on camera, but I can tell in person. And then I will show you the other one here where I just added that first layer on top of holographic cardstock. So I prefer the die cut inlay, but either way is great and they're easy and the holographic cardstock is just amazing. So now here is that smaller one, the smaller butterfly, and a light bulb went off. I have that base layer die cut from white cardstock and I added tape runner to the entire piece. And then I added that first layer that has the outline to it with the white cardstock. I also die cut one from the holographic and I'm laying that one on top of my white one and then just kind of gently pushing through so that those areas stick to where they need to and I can just kind of gently push it down. So this was a lot quicker. Kind of wish I would have thought of it for the larger one, but either way works great or if you just want to die cut the layers themselves and not do inlay, either way works great. For sentiment, I'm going to use the Long Distance Hugs Stamp and Die. I lined up the word hugs onto some black licorice cardstock and I'm prepping that with my anti-static powder tool. Then I'm going to stamp this in some embossing ink. Now there's a couple different styles of hugs on there and they have coordinating dies. I really liked kind of this larger scriptier one. And then I'm sprinkling on some of the Lawn Fawn white embossing powder and I'm gonna melt this with my heat tool. Then I'll use the coordinating die. I'm just going to line it up over my word, hold it in place with post-it tape, and run that through the die cut machine. So here's my background dry, and I have my butterflies placed about where I want them. And you can see there are lots of different smaller sentiments that would go with the word hugs. So I am choosing long distance, and it happens to fit right in between a couple of my uh, bubbles on the background there. So once I had that lined up straight, I'm just gonna stamp this straight onto the card. And for that, I'm going to use a VersaFine ink. Now this one you have to be careful with, it can stay wet for a little while. So I just wanna make sure that I either uh, apply some heat to it with my heat tool just to dry it quicker, or just set it off on the side for a minute or two to dry. Then I took some liquid glue and just added dots to the back of the word hugs. And I can add that right underneath the long distance. I love how that top of the H kind of loops right next to that word. And then I have foam squares on the back of my larger butterfly. And then now the smaller one, I'm just going to adhere with a tape runner. And that will finish off my card. I love taking this bubble background stencil and using it for a bokeh effect. And I have so many different color combinations in my mind that I want to try this with that I think would look so amazing. And adding a little bit of that glitter, that moonstone just really helps make those bokeh background pop. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have an amazing rest of your week.